On today's episode of the Piedmont Motion Picture Show, we've got an in-depth tutorial for Luma Fusion, one of our favorite apps that allows you to edit professional quality video on your iOS device. And that starts right now. Hey guys, Ryan here with the Piedmont Motion Picture Company. Thank you so much for joining me today. This channel is all about learning and growing as a filmmaker. So if you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Please share it with your friends. And if you're not already, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification icon so you don't miss our new content. And let's become better filmmakers together. So you've just purchased LumaFusion from the App Store. And hopefully this tutorial will give you everything you need to start editing video on your iOS device. The first time you boot up the app, you'll be asked to give LumaFusion access to your device's camera roll, so be sure to accept that permission. You'll also be prompted to check out the official LumaFusion tutorials page, but you're here instead, so thank you. First, let's talk about the main default timeline layout and all of the different menu options. We'll do a deep dive into each one. The default layout basically has three major areas, the browser or sources window, the preview window, and the timeline. In the top left of the screen, you'll see a little flower icon. This is the sources button. Here you can find media from various sources, and LumaFusion has built-in titles and transitions that you can use as well. Directly below that, you'll see the sources window or the browser window. This is where you access the selected sources chosen from the drop-down menus above. For example, you can have this window display photos and videos that are stored on your device's camera roll. To the right of the browser window, you'll see the import icon. This imports files that are stored in your cloud storage folders. To the right of that, you'll see a little list icon. This is your project manager. Here you can find a list of all your LumaFusion projects that you've created. You have options here for creating a new project, exporting projects, duplicating projects, optimization and consolidation of projects, and deleting projects. There are also icons for searching your project list and a sorting option for keeping things in order. Click the circle icon beside the project to select a color tag for the project and you can click the note icon beside the project name to add notes to the project as well. Right beside the project manager button, you can find the name of the project. You can tap on the name to rename the project. Beside the project name, you'll see the current frame rate. Up next, you'll see the share icon. This option allows for you to share your video in a variety of ways. You can export the movie, audio only, you can archive your project, or create a snapshot or screen grab. Note that if your project is currently empty, with no audio or video on the timeline, the share option will be grayed out. When your project has media on the timeline, the source window just below the share icon will feature images from your current project, or you can preview media here that you may be using. Right beside the share icon, we see the help and settings icon. This menu option has a lot of really important settings. Here you can find project settings, which allows you to set the frame rate, aspect, your background color, and audio ducking time, durations, and volumes. You'll see global settings or basically default project settings. You can set a default frame rate, a default aspect ratio, the number of backups you'd like to save, whether you want them to fill the frame, fit the frame, or be stretched to fit. You can set the default clip length for photos, titles, and transitions. You can adjust the style of the clips on the timeline, whether you want them to have waveforms, no icons, etc. Here you can also select for the screen to show your touches, which is great for making tutorials like this one. You can also set the preview quality settings and select the image type for snapshot images. So there are a lot of options in this window. Below global settings, you have the help option. Here you can find additional tutorial videos, a reference guide, links to customer support, a link to review the app, and a link to upload your project to support for really detailed help. Lots of very handy features here. Below help, you'll see the cleanup window. The options here allow you to clear temporary files and unused media cache files to optimize performance. 
So if your device seems to be having trouble running the app after a while, check here to clean up some unused files. Right beside the Help button is the Layout button. This allows you to choose the layout that you like best. There are six layouts in total, so you should find something that you like. However, for the purposes of this tutorial, we will be using the default layout. At the bottom left of the browser window, you'll see a check mark icon. This is the multi-select button. Tap the multi-select button to highlight it. You can select additional clips from the library by tapping them, or dragging your finger left and right over the rows. Note that dragging to select is disabled on the iPhone while in portrait mode. Each selected item will have a number showing the selection order. This is the order in which they will be added to the timeline. Just tap a clip to either remove it from the selection or to change the order. You can tap and hold on the last selected item to drag the items to the timeline, or double tap the last item to quickly insert the items at the playhead on the timeline. You can double tap the double check mark to select all the clips in the current library view as well. Off to the bottom right of the browser window, you'll see a magnifying glass for searching the clips in your libraries. Beside the search icon, you'll see a list icon. This allows you to view and sort the clips in the browser. You can set a view type, choose a sort field, and the direction of the sort. Right beside the list icon, and right under the preview window, you'll see the time code for the current project. Next, you'll see the preview transport controls. Press the play button to play through your media. You can also drag your finger left and right on the jog wheel to scrub through if you're previewing a file from the browser. The button that pops up on the lower left when previewing a file from the browser allows you to quickly add the selected clip to the timeline, wherever the playhead is in the timeline. You can set the in and out points and trim your clip before it's placed in the timeline. Here there are jump buttons to go quickly to the in and out points. There is also an info tab that will tell you everything you need to know about the selected clip. You can also skip single frames forwards and backwards. You can also double tap the preview window to expand it and use the whole screen. Just double tap to return. Note that if you tap on a clip in the timeline or the timeline itself, the preview window will display the images from the timeline and the playhead controls will change a bit. The in and out buttons will go away and you'll also see the undo and redo buttons for the correction of mistakes. Moving down to the timeline, the first icon you'll see on the top left is the audio toggle button. Tap this button to expand a menu that lets you change the levels of your audio channels and the level of your master channel that will affect the overall volume of the video. Tap it once for a view of all the channels, again for a minimized view of just the master, and again to close it all together. Just below the audio button is the send to timeline button. You can tap a clip in the browser window and then tap the send to timeline button to send the selected clip straight to the timeline. If the playhead is at the end of the main track, when you insert a clip, the playhead will update to the end of the added clip, so you can quickly insert multiple clips in a row to your timeline. The vertical blue or white line in the middle of the timeline is the playhead, and shows the frame that is currently shown in the preview. When zoomed out, the line is blue, and when zoomed in, the line is white to cover the start and the end of a single frame. At the bottom of the timeline is the ruler. The ruler displays increments of time in hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. How much detail you see is determined by how zoomed in or out you are on the timeline. You can also use a pinch gesture to zoom in and out of the timeline. We've already mentioned how to add clips to the timeline, but to remove a clip, select the clip and then click the trash can icon located to the left of the timeline. There are three modes on the timeline that determine how clips behave when media is added, removed, or reordered. The insert mode or ripple delete mode makes sure that clips are moved out of the way to make room for new clips, and gaps are closed when removing clips from the timeline. Overwrite mode means that any actions taken on the timeline will not have an impact on the positions of other clips located elsewhere on the timeline. You can use overwrite mode when you want the new clip to replace or cover up a section of a clip that's already on the timeline. And then finally we have replace mode. 
This replaces media on the main track without removing the existing clip. You'll notice that video files are at the top of the timeline in the form of blue forms, and audio files are at the bottom of the timeline, indicated by green forms. You can press and hold the jump back or jump forward buttons to begin moving single frames on the timeline. You can also long press the play button to begin looping the video. Tap it again to stop. Off to the right of the timeline, you'll first see the Clips Tool Panel button. This gives you access to functions for the currently selected clip. You may have to leave the Clip Tools panel open while you edit. Here you'll find an Info button, the Slip Trim button, which adjusts the start and end frame of the clip without affecting the duration in the timeline. The Clone tool makes a copy of the selected clip and places it on the timeline. The Detach tool detaches audio from a selected video clip, placing the detached audio on an available audio track. The Link or Unlink tool attaches or detaches the selected clip from a clip on the main track. The Presets tool opens a collection of presets that you can apply to the selected clip. These presets will vary depending on what type of clip you are editing. Tapping Edit opens the default clip editor for the selected clip. Tapping Edit is also the same as double tapping a single clip. When you go into the Edit menu, depending on what type of clip you have selected, you'll have a host of options for configuring that clip. You'll see options for cropping and fitting, colors and effects, audio effects, speed and reverse, and in the top right you can access and create presets by using the star. The Clipboard tool allows you to copy and paste attributes from clip to clip. Things like color, audio, and effects. Below the tools, you'll see the plus icon. Here you can add a voiceover, transition, or title to your clip. And just below that, you'll see the cut tool. This cuts your clip wherever the playhead is positioned. Well, that's pretty much an in-depth overview of Luma Fusion. There are a ton more in-depth gestures and advanced editing techniques that we may go over in a future video, but what we've covered here today should get you off to a good start. As you can see, LumaFusion is a fully featured video editor for iOS, and it's one of our favorites. If you're looking to create professional video using your iOS device, I highly recommend it. If you have a LumaFusion tip or question you'd like to share with the rest of us, please post it in the comments below. As always, I hope this video has been very beneficial to you, and if it has, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks for coming along on this filmmaking journey with me. I am Ryan, and I will see you on the next Piedmont Motion Picture Show.